Thank you, Gloria. Dr. Bob is a tough act to follow, I have to admit. But I have a few things to talk to you about that I think uh, will interest you. And um, in keeping with his theme, we're actually witnessing the most aggressive rollback of federal environmental regulations since the Reagan administration. And uh, Donald Trump's general is Scott Pruitt, and his henchmen are uh, Ted Cruz and John Cornyn and our own Lamar Smith. Now, I keep looking for Lamar to show up. I told Terry, I said, you know, if maybe he would have a little courage and just come in and meet with us. I think that would be the biggest shocker of them all. But he's not here, and uh, you may have seen the little video where Terry confronted him last week, and, or Monday, and, and it, it uh, you know, it's amazing how much he runs from his real constituents. Now, I have a story that I want to tell you about that took place 60 years ago, but we're seeing it replayed again. There was a young geologist in the late 1940s who as part of getting his uh, PhD was charged with finding the age of the earth. And uh, this young man's name was Claire Patterson. Uh, in doing this process, he found that his samples were contaminated with atmospheric lead and he couldn't figure out you know, what was causing that. He eventually overcame that problem and finally, in 1953, he determined the age of the Earth was about four and a half billion years, and that still stands today. He didn't give up at that point. He still wanted to find out where the hell this atmospheric lead came from. And uh, using ice cores from Greenland, he found that prior to 1923, the level of atmospheric lead was almost zero. And uh, the answer of where that came from easily fell from that. Uh, there was a chemist named Thomas Midgley who, uh, working on behalf of the oil and chemical and auto industries, developed something called tetraethyl lead, or leaded gasoline. And leaded gasoline enhanced the performance of engines and made them not knock. And uh, it was a great breakthrough. Of course, at that time, people didn't understand what we know about lead uh, today, that it's a horrible neurotoxin, particularly affecting children, and you just have to see the latest example up in Flint, Michigan, of the issue. The other thing Midgley gave us was chlorofluorocarbons, and you may remember they were burning a hole in the ozone layer. So he, had, he didn't have the trifecta, but he got the daily double. Now, for his efforts, Claire Patterson was persecuted by the oil industry, the chemical industry, the auto industry, and even the United States Public Health Service. His grants were taken away from him, and they tried to get him fired from his faculty position. He didn't give up. He fought and fought. Um, the Clean Air Act of 1970 actually was in part due to his efforts, and in 1974, chlorofluorohydrocarbons were finally banned. But leaded gasoline was not banned till 1986. And why do you think that was? A massive lobby campaign on part of my industry, and I was there, uh, and they hired scientists who would say, you know, this is not a problem and went to great extremes and literally held, uh, held off the onslaught to ban lead. And of course, finally in 1986, under the Reagan administration, lead and gasoline was banned in the United States and eventually all over the world. And uh, immediately after that, you know, shortly after that, and uh, you know, he's anti-science, anti-climate change, anti-evolution, anti-sex education, and yet he's on the Science, Space, and Technology Committee. How can you, I can't imagine that, you know. Um, he's questioned the integrity of the EPA and NOAA and NASA. Uh, 
subpoenaed, sent 25 subpoenas out, uh, and wanted to see the emails of the scientists in these organizations. And on March 23rd, at a conference, the International Conference on Climate Change, he spoke, and he bragged about his subpoenas to a rousing applause. And that conference was a climate change denier conference, and it was funded by nine entities led by the Heartland Institute, and these nine entities, no doubt, and I tried to find out where their funding came from, and I couldn't, but I'm guessing it came from energy and auto and chemical industries. The APA came into existence because the American people demanded environmental reform. I can guarantee you Richard Nixon didn't care about it. He was forced into doing that. And we must demand that Lamar Smith not allow the EPA to be destroyed. We need to fight Smith and Pruitt's efforts to eliminate methane rules that would cause natural resources not to be wasted and would accelerate global warming. And, and methane has about a 25% uh, worse effect on global warming than CO2 even. We need to tell Smith not to reduce the EPA budget that would cripple research on global warming. And you know, it's funny, I heard Rex Tillerson talk about, well, we need to study it more. Well, how can we study it more if we take their funding away? This is ridiculous keep those letters coming in to Lamar and to the newspapers and we need to make progress. Thank you all and uh, I'm ready to get out on the street again and turn it back to Gloria.